Welcome back. You know, religion is about wellness, and one of the things that makes us ill is that we get too angry, and it hurts us, and it hurts other people. So today we're talking about anger and how to control it, and, and the recent examples of violence of kids against kids, and just the, the general increase in, in anger and, and nastiness. A lot of violence on TV, uh, some of the video games that, that we've seen that are very violent, encouraging people to be further violent. Um, and when you all live with frustration, how you handle that frustration is an important issue. Very, very big issue. So, welcome. Welcome to Jennifer Nadich, and, and also welcome to you, Lynn Vinick Keller. Lynn. Lynn and Jennifer. And also on the phone from Chicago is Nicole Johnson. She's experienced firsthand the effects of anger in her relationship with her mom and how that spilled over into her marriage. She has a wonderful book called Fresh Brood Life. And Gr we'll great title, that. Nicole. Great. <laughs> Thanks. Welcome. Thank you. Well, Thanks. the first question I wanted to ask all of you is, what really is anger? People think they know what it is, you know, sort of heavy breathing and, and screaming <laughs> and yelling. Mm -hmm. but, but what, from a psychological point of view, and Nicole, from your own life experience, how would you describe and define anger? Jennifer? Well, anger is a basic human emotion that we all experience at some point in our lives, usually when we are met with frustration or antagonism from other people, criticism. But it's not just the frustration that's causing the anger. It's really the way we look at it that's causing the anger. And what, what do you we, mean by that? Well, it's really what we tell ourselves or how we interpret the situation that's going to cause us to be angry. For example, if we have unrealistic expectations on the environment or on other people, that they must treat us with respect, kindness, consideration, or not break our rules, and they do, we're going to likely be very angry and Very enraged. good point. You know, I think that one of the reasons the, for road rage and the anger mm -hmm. people feel on the highway is, is just wrong expectations. They right. believe the people I know, all these horrible, awful drivers uh -huh. that we have to deal with, uh, they believe that when they buy the car, mm -hmm. they buy all the air in front of their car. <laughs> that that right. comes with it. Right. And if you get in their air, you're violating their right. private air. Which you must not do. Which you must <laughs> not do, which is silly. Tell us a little bit about the unhealthy anger. When, when we might know that it's not helping us or anybody else to be angry. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good point, is you need to look at whether or not it's helping you. And also look at your ideas about a situation to see how much you're fueling the fire. Um, you spoke before about should I let it out and the teapot analogy. And there are really three options when you're dealing with anger. Do I hold it in? Do I let it out? Or do I turn down the flame and turn down the anger, which is the position I would advocate? Yeah. That's what I've actually learned from you. Because you are unbelievably serene. You're frighteningly serene. You're, you're terrifyingly serene. When you have somebody come to you who is just filled with anger, mm -hmm. what, what do you try to do with them? Well, the first thing that I try to do with them is help them take responsibility for their emotional reaction to the situation, to a frustrating but situation. But if they didn't do it to me, I wouldn't right, have gotten angry. Right. I'm a victim. Right. They did it. I was unjustly penalized. I was unjustly discriminated against. I have a right to be angry. You I do. hear this all the time in my counseling. You do, right. And people do have a right to be angry, but you have to look at how is it helping you? Is it helping you solve the problem? Is it helping you improve your relationships? Is it helping you to feel good? Is it helping your physical health? And then also how are you expressing it? Right. I'm concerned about the issue of that anger inappropriately expressed can lead to a heart attack. Is mm -hmm. that true? It can definitely increase your risk for heart problems and stroke, certainly, and exacerbate any stress-related illness. Hmm. Holding it in and letting it out can both lead to increased risk for coronary heart disease, though. And I was stationed with a priest who was really upset about fireworks, and some people were setting off fireworks, and he went out and he had this um, battle, back and forth, verbal battle with this uh, group of people. Came back to the rectory, sat down, said, I feel faint and died. Mm. Heart attack. Yeah. Whoa, that explains wow. a lot of your serenity right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've all given us great things to think about, and uh, we're all struggling with anger in our lives, hopefully putting Most it in a positive are. direction. Some of us have no problem we'll with this at all. We'll be in a minute to hear the rabbi's <laughs> yeah. therapeutic response right. to the question of anger in his life.